Well, we're looking at work right now, um, and so I wanted to kind of go through the details of it. Now, remember, we did talk about work already uh, in a small sense. It is a force times a distance, and it's the distance. Uh, the force and the distance have to be applied in the same direction. So we just went up the stairs, and we calculated your work done by going up the stairs based on um, your mass times gravity. So you were the force that you were lifting and the distance was the height of the stairs from the first floor to the second floor. Okay, so that's what work was. And again, again, we need to know work so that we can figure out power and we're going to relate this all back to energy. Um, so let's give you some more of those details on work. Okay, by definition when we look at work, work is the product of the magnitude of the force um, applied in the direction of the force. Okay, and so this makes work a scalar quantity. Work is a scalar quantity. Um, when we look at any kind of an object, again, it really does depend upon the force and the distance and they have to be in the same direction. So you can see here that what I've got here is a, a, an applied force, okay? But this applied force is at an angle. And so when we look at it, we have to figure out what is the force that's acting in the same direction as the distance or the displacement that we're moving. Okay? And so that's kind of how we set this up. We have to look at it in terms of where are we in relation to the distance that the object is moving. So if I'm going to do work on this object, I need to apply the force times the distance, but it has to be in the direction of the um, displacement or the distance that we're moving. Um, so this F cosine theta is nothing more than making the component of the force um, in the same direction as the displacement. Um, here's an interesting thing, of course, if you already are applying the force in the same direction as that distance, uh, you would have zero angle and the cosine of zero is always one. So in other words, this is the formula that's written up on the board now. And so this is what we're going to use. Uh, force is always measured in newtons. Distance is measured in meters. And so we actually have um, work labeled as either newton meters. Or if you tried to say newton meters really fast three times, newton meters, newton meters, newton meters, you get tongue tied a little bit. And so what they really want to do is say that one newton meter is equal to one joule. Okay, and joule is abbreviated with a capital J. So joule is just another way that we can talk about um, work. Okay, or another unit that we can use when we talk about work. Um, the big thing again is knowing that the distance and the force have to be applied in the same direction. So I actually have two examples and these are kind of the examples that every physics teacher likes to talk about because they want to see if you really truly understand this. Here I have two situations. I have my stick guy that's pushing on the wall and he's pushing with a lot of force and we can measure how much force he's pushing on that wall. The problem is, is the wall's not moving. Okay, so we have in this case, displacement is zero meters, okay? Even though the force may be something like 10,000 newtons. So maybe we're applying 10,000 newtons of force, but we're moving to, uh, zero distance. So this would say no work, okay? No work is done on the wall, even though we're expelling a lot of force, okay? And so that's very basic, you have to understand that if the object doesn't move, no work can be done. Now the other one is my stick figure where we've, we've, we're holding a box and we're walking along with it. We're applying a force, but the force that we're applying is to kind of keep the box up in our arms. Okay, So in other words, we're applying that force. The direction that we're moving though is in this direction. So the um, applied force is acting at a right angle to the motion. So in other words, we're at that right angle, we can't be doing any work, okay? There's zero work that can be done because the cosine of a 90 degree angle is zero. So in other words, no work in this situation either. Um, so that's kind of what we look at when we look at these situations. Now, you might argue and say that the, the stick figure here did some work. And they did do some work if we said that the box was on the ground and they picked the box up. But the moment that they're holding onto the box, there's no work that can be done, okay, as they move across. 
So now we can look at this in a graphical sense, and this is probably one of the things that we'll end up doing with our computers, is we'll take the little, I've got little force probes and we'll pull something, and so we'll look at how does this look in a graph sense. Um, under the picture that I have here, we're talking about force, but this is a constant force. And you can see that it's oops, a constant force because the force right here is never changing. So in other words, my graph shows that my force is always going to be changing even though I'm applying a distance. So maybe I'm pulling um, my wagon, but I'm pulling it with a constant force the whole entire time. And so then I am actually seeing that um, it will graph out so that it's a nice flat line, zero slope. Um, work, again, is nothing more than a force times a distance, right? So if I look at this as being my force, and this as being my distance, okay, I'm looking at two sides of a rectangle. This is very similar to something like a length times a width, and if you remember from a geometry class, that's how we figured out area of a rectangle, okay? So work is very much like a rectangle formula. It's, a, it's an area formula. Um, so in other words, if we wanted to calculate the area, or the, calculate the amount of work that we're gonna do, all we have to do is find the area underneath our graph, and in this shape, it's just a rectangular box, so it's just the work, or the force times the distance, okay? Um, now again, this is under the sense of a constant force. Well, we know that we live in this world where things can always change, so in other words, maybe our forces are not always going to be constant. Our number one place where we see a non-constant type of a force would be in maybe a spring. So as we start to stretch a spring or compress a spring, the forces change depending on the material that the spring is made out of. Um, so again, that's something that's a variable force. So in other words, now we're looking at force being non-constant. Okay, so now our force is non-constant. Well, if we still can graph it, so in other words, if I'm pulling on a spring, but I'm using a, a force meter um, to actually measure that, and I'm collecting that information, you can see that I'm gonna get points, and maybe my points come out looking like this. Again, if I wanna figure out the amount of work that I've done, all I have to do is find the area under the graph, okay? The area under the graph is always going to be my work whenever I'm graphing, force versus displacement, okay? And so that's how we look at it. In this case, it's a nice triangle, so it's one half of the base times the height, and so we can figure out our energy from, or our work from that, okay? And again, they're giving it now in joules here in my example, and that's how we kind of figure out our work. So, let's talk a little bit about problem solving and what kind of things can we do with problem. Okay, this is a very typical type of a situation where we have some object, we're gonna pull it, so we have some kind of a force that we're going to apply, we're gonna be at some angle. Um, what's the easiest situation? So let's say um, this would be my easy problem. We'd be given, say, the distance of, I don't know, 10 meters. So maybe we're gonna pull this crate 10 meters. And we're given um, the force um, of, that's applied. So the applied force might be given, say it's 100 newtons. Okay, all we would need to do to solve something like this would be to look at work is equal to a force times a distance times the cosine of the angle, okay? So in other words, we're given the force, we're given the distance, we're given the angle. Go ahead and find out what the work is. Um, fairly easy, straightforward type of problem. How can we make it a little more difficult? Okay, so what could we do to this? We could make uh, add friction. So maybe we tell you that there's a friction force. So maybe we say that the friction force is uh, 20 newtons, okay? So now what we have to do is we have to look at it in terms of, of there's a friction force 
acting this way and our applied force is this way. So in other words, I have a force that would be parallel to this. And these two forces cancel each other out. So in other words, my force parallel minus my force of friction would be the force that I would want to use in figuring out my work. Okay? So my force of, say, like the work amount, or I'd call it like a net force. Okay? So my work force times now my distance times would be equal. Okay? And so my force parallel is going to take care of that whole cosine part because I'm going to figure out my force parallel. Um, in fact, that's kind of an, another way to look at this is the work is always the force parallel times a distance. Okay? Um, so in other words, my parallel force takes care of the cosine. So how could we make it a little more difficult? Okay? Uh, just give uh, the coefficient of friction. So maybe we just give you a coefficient of friction, okay? Now you have to actually determine, okay? So now you have to find the friction force. Okay, you're gonna find that friction force by looking at my free body diagram again. So again, we're looking at this. Maybe we also gave you the mass of the crate. So in other words, you'd have to know Fg, your force applied, force of friction, still have force applied there. Um, and so what we do is we look at this and say, now we know that this is going to equate out to not only a force um, parallel, but there will also be a force perpendicular. And the perpendicular force and the weight force are going to kind of cancel each other out so that we can figure out our normal force. Okay, so we're going to have to um, find components, find a force perpendicular, because our normal force is going to be equal to the weight. minus the force perpendicular. Once we have that, then we can find our, co uh, find our frictional force. Okay, And once we know our frictional force, we can then go ahead and subtract um, the friction force from our force parallel so we can figure out our work. Okay, So again, there's levels to the difficulty that we can apply to these type of problems um, and how they kind of tie into it. Now, if we want to even make it more difficult than this, we'd go all the way back to our kinematic relationship and we'd say maybe um, the object started, so we started moving at rest and then we moved till we got to a velocity of, um, you know, two meters per second and then we want to figure out how much work was done in getting from that point to that point, so then we have to figure out what the acceleration rate was and the acceleration is our net. Um, force or related back to our net force and once we've figured out our net force then we can do that. So again, there's levels that we can add to this. Now, um, when we really start to look at work and we look at how we're going to impact changes in work and how we get to the next little activity that you're going to do where you're going to make your video of your simple machines, um, we do want to talk a little bit about simple machines. Now a machine is nothing more than a way to change how we do the work, okay? The work is going to be the same. So in other words, whatever work we put into the machine is going to be equal to the work that we get out of the machine, okay? So it really is about work in is equal to the work out. But if you think about it in that terms, the force that we apply in times the distance or the displacement that we apply in is in just a different relation to the work that force that we get out versus the displacement that we get out, okay? And so that's kind of how we look at it. Now, when you look at your simple machines, you're going to be looking at where do you apply the force and where does the uh, object move during that and where do we um, get the work out, okay? So again, that's about the relations and I'm seeing that I'm just about at time. So again, making videos of simple machines is the in-class.